So we left Thailand about seven or maybe eight days ago. And uh, we're just on the Sri Lankan coast now. Then we're heading south down the east coast of Sri Lanka to catch the good current, hopefully. Uh, then we're gonna slingshot ourselves west further over to the Maldives. It's 11 p.m. on my shift, and my shift goes till 2. And we started off and we saw a fishing boat kind of do a drive by us. But it was a pretty small fishing boat and we were like, oh, interesting. And then it's like, oh, that looks like a bit of like a long liner. But like, weird, not like what we're used to seeing around. We are hundreds of miles away from any shoreline. If you look around on the horizon during the day, there's no one. If you look around on the horizon at night on the radar, there's no one. Sometimes you'll see another fishing boat, the other thing to consider is that uh, we are very vulnerable in terms of who's on board. We, I have a wife and two very small children. I cannot take collateral damage in terms of gunshots. I cannot take collateral damage in terms of uh, taking a beating. We are definitely of the opinion of if you're sailing around the world, you're in a mode of travel. And if you're traveling, well, you're probably doing it to experience culture. So. To experience culture, you kind of have to trust that people are good and... I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. <laughs> 28 countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. Holy smokes, it's like a flat lake out here. It's shocking. I haven't seen this kind, these kind of conditions in a long, long, long time. This is incredible. We're out in between uh, basically the, the tip of Sumatra and the tip of Sri Lanka, north and south. And uh, yeah, we're kind of straight smack dab in the middle right now, like in the middle of nowhere. And it's a lake. It's shockingly a lake. So what'd you catch? Garbage. More garbage? Wow. Maybe this is the great Indian garbage patch. I mean, there's some small fish in there, but I don't see any big ones. There's just so much garbage around here. I mean, some of it's organic, but a lot of it's microplastics. I don't, I don't think that's very micro. It's like mega plastic. <laughs> I literally thought I was gonna hit a car bumper. So all morning I've been dodging this garbage line and uh, sometimes there's big stuff in it. So we decided we better probably go either to the north or the south of it because we're heading west. So Ben just turned south. I said, let's figure out if there's a favorable side to this current line because it's obviously some sort of line that the garbage is tracing on. You can see it. I wonder if you can see it in the camera. So we're looking for a favorable boost west. So either south of the line or the north of the line. I'm not sure which it'll be. We'll go figure it out. Well, there's more down there. It's it's crazy the amount of garbage right here. In Asia, they, they have a lot of food in little bags and then they just tie it at the top with elastics really tight. Like there's really like soup in there or something. Um, but that's what this is. I guess it just gets thrown in the ocean. Or ends up in the ocean. I don't know, maybe they just dump the garbage in the ocean, like they put it in bins and dump it in the ocean. I have no idea. There's footage of that from India. 
I don't want to blame one particular country, but it's been pretty bad ever since we got down to Indonesia. The Philippines was really bad. Uh, Thailand was really bad. It's pretty bad. A lot of plastic. I don't know, three or four. I think four, it's day four. And no fish, but I have been catching garbage today. And I'm trying to figure out where it's from because it's got, it's telling. Indonesia. Yep, you can find out where your garbage is from because they write where it's from on it. <laughs> it's not really hard, it's not a big <laughs> mystery. So I guess a lot of the garbage here, it's from all over but a lot of this, I guess, is floating up from Indonesia based on the way the currents are rolling through here. Indonesian fertilizer, what do you pick up? Indonesian... I don't know, some sort of food bag. Yeah. We actually uh, met uh, the people behind the Clean Water Initiatives. It's a company that is cleaning up the harbors in Hong Kong. They build these super cool solar-powered boats and they go around and they scoop up garbage. They it's like they eat garbage. Yeah, they scoop up garbage in the harbor though and it makes sense because they're dealing with the problem before it gets into the ocean because once it's out here, it's really hard to deal with. And I think the same thing needs to happen in Indonesia and a lot of these uh, Asian countries is just clean it up in the rivers, the harbors, and those areas before it spills out. So Ben's just getting ready to go for a swim. <laughs> uh, not because he wants to. We've been driving through garbage for days. Uh, daytime and nighttime and uh, we finally caught a plastic bag last night at dusk. I, did, I opted not to jump in as it was dark so now it's the next morning we're gonna go for a little swim. Clear the bag, fix our speed speedometer, the little paddle wheel on the speedometer I think is clogged as well. Anyways we'll have a quick look get right back to it. The bags are kind of freaky though because they float like about um, about a meter below the surface, so between two and three feet below the surface. It's kind of weird. I've seen flip-flops. So there's still quite a lot of current here, but we're sideways to it. And um, so it should, I stopped us before he jumped in, so we should be able to, you know, not get going too fast. But we will probably be doing about a knot, but he's got his good fins on. So hopefully he can keep up with one knot. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Uh, just let me know when we're like at zero. It's clear, there's no more bag. <laughs> Sweet! Okay, I'll work on the speedo and check the other trough. That's it. I said, how's the water? Oh, it's lovely. Do you want to come in? I don't know. <laughs> sure, it's nice getting off the boat, but a little bit of eebie-jeebies, like this kind of deep water has big fish. Big, big fish. Not that we can catch, though. Ah, uh, I'm thinking sharks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aggressive sharks. All right, I gotta go check on Willa. Okay, our dad is down here. Can you see him under here? Put your face down and look through the net. It's been one of the calmest passages ever. We're just motoring along. Uh, a fishing boat just came by and checked us out. It's pretty small. Figuring it's probably from India. Looks like a long liner because he has uh, huge sticks on the front um, for the marking the ends of the long lines. I always hate it when they come and check us out at dusk. Um, gives me the EBGBs. I don't know why. I have trust issues, I guess. 
I just feel very vulnerable out here with my family in the middle of nowhere uh, with no gun on board. We would never have a gun on board, by the way. It's so illegal in some countries, so you can like get the death penalty. Oh, we got inked by squid last night. Absolutely everywhere. We're working through our way through the jerry cans. We've put in three 40 liters on this side and 130 on the other side. Ashley's been doing her fuel calculations and I think we're good for another seven days. So that should get us there, no problem. And there's absolutely no wind. I mean, this is what we're looking at. Uh, we have wind from our boat moving forward. During the day, it's just excessively hot, excessively. So we try to survive. It's been seriously scorching hot during the day. It's been epic. We've had amazing sunsets. Here comes another one. Um, but the days, wow, they are hot. Wowzers. It's just kind of like the days fly by and nothing much happens. Oh, my hand. This is the first time I've seen one of these things coming up since we were in Palau and the Sri Lankan fish and vessels are actually really good they have a lot of a most of them I think have AIS on board they don't broadcast far but they usually do broadcast at some point um, but there's a buoy marked on here and I don't know sometimes they set buoys with like long lines or whatever it is something to do with fishing but other times it could be a big canister of some sort I think this one's drifting, I'm not sure. It's been kind of, I don't know. I, it's like one of those nights where you just see like, there's no light on it. You have no idea what it is. And usually you can see a light until it comes up with all the info that it's just a buoy. You're like, what the heck? Is my AIS totally off? So it's, it's totally nerve wracking sailing nights like this. I'm going pretty fast because of the currents. Um, there's, the ground is coming up, so they're able to anchor fads again now. I just don't know. We just don't really know, know what, it is, what it is because we got here in the dark, and now it is still a dark, of course. But it's crazy. There is two knots of current right now, so we've got about five knots of boat speed. Actually, I could probably kill the engines again because we're, we've borne off again. We're sailing really close to the wind, um, basically close hauled, as close as we can get. And... Uh, most sales are up. Anyway, it's still very early in my night shift and I'm already having to kind of like weave and dodge. It's one of those nights. But I'm feeling good about it tonight, not like the other night when I was just tired. <laughs> Makes a huge difference. Uh, anyway, I better go check on this. This thing that keeps God knows where it is and what it is and where it's going. Okay, so that's totally crazy. I just came in to write in the logbook that I'd passed all these dang fishing boats. And I look on AIS and one pops up and it says we're 1.6 miles away from a fishing vessel. Uh, yeah, a fishing vessel from Sri Lanka, Umula. So that's amazing. They are actually on AIS and they're doing just one knot. So I guess they are drifting with the current, which is what I suspected. So I was going around them now. Gosh knows, gosh knows actually what they're doing with all their fishing nets. So I'm glad I'm, I'm over a mile away actually. I'm 1. 1. 1.6 miles away, nautical miles away. So that's good. I didn't run into them. Who knows what kind of gear is in the water around them. You don't know. Not freaked out, but you know, cautious. <laughs> what the heck, a ghost ship? Could have been, you know, a ghost ship. Yeah, it feels great to sail again. Sailing vessel Nahoa. Woo! Back to motor vessel shortly here, no worries. Wouldn't want to get away from that this trip. <clears throat> it's 2 a.m. I uh, just saw my night shift right now. I actually just finished hers. Just want to give a little context to our situation in here. We are hundreds of miles away from any shoreline. So at our speed, our average cruising speed's five knots. 
that's multiple days for us. It's multiple days for most vessels out here because in order to get out this far, you typically have a slow cruising speed. The go fast boats have a shorter range usually. If a situation were to escalate uh, with, with another boat out here, uh, it would be very bad uh, because we can't call for help. If you look around on the horizon during the day, there's no one. If you look around on the horizon at night on the radar, there's no one. Sometimes you'll see another fishing boat. Um, do they have VHF? I have no idea. In terms of VHF, VHF is the radio signal we use out here. Uh, VHF goes as far as line of sight, basically. Um, so if you can't see them on radar at night, you can't see them during the day, you typically can't communicate. Uh, you could possibly communicate via satellite. You could set off an EPIRB, uh, which is like a distress beacon. Uh, if your boat's sinking, maybe search and rescue would come out and find you. Uh, this is the part of the world though where there's probably not as much coordination for search and rescue as there is in the Western world. So who knows? Either way, uh, you have to trust that humanity is good. And we do deep down trust humanity is good. Uh, we trust but verify. So let me explain. When a boat approaches, we don't invite them in right away. We wait a few minutes. We see what their actions are. We all ask some questions, listen to their answers. We'll ask some more probing questions, see what their answers are, and, and so forth. So that's how we roll. Um, a lot of people often say online, you need to have guns, you need an AK-47, you need a M6 whatever. I'm not a gun person. The thing when you're sailing around the world, you have to check in and check out of a lot of countries. In a lot of the countries we've been to, uh, guns are very illegal to the point of uh, being given the death penalty if you possess a gun. So that's not very helpful in terms of cruising around the world. Um, the gun laws in the U.S. are very different from most of the world. The other thing to consider is that uh, we are very vulnerable in terms of who's on board. We, I have a wife and two very small children. I cannot take collateral damage in terms of gunshots. I cannot take collateral damage in terms of uh, taking a beating. Uh, the only thing I can do is not let the bad guys aboard in the first place. Outrun if you can. If you can't outrun, Outmaneuver. Throw lines out the back, try and foul their props. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, so yeah, that's basically where we are at in terms of defending ourselves out here. Um, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Uh, we are definitely of the opinion of if you're sailing around the world, you're in a mode of travel. And if you're traveling, well, you're probably doing it to experience culture. So to experience culture, you kind of have to trust that people are good and you want to experience, well, the people. So uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm sure we'll eventually meet these people, um, but I'd be curious to see what you guys think. What would you do? What would you have on board? What would be your mental state? Where, where would you tend towards? Would you trust? Would you mistrust? Would you trust then verify? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Till tomorrow high seas. Well, not very high right now. It's very calm out here. It's very dark. Bye for now. Ashley's just down for a nap. I got Bodhi and there's a uh, I think it's an Indian or Sri Lankan fishing boat coming up to us. They're waving. I don't know what they want. We're in the middle of nowhere. So earlier I talked about how there's different signals, international signals, because we don't talk their language, they don't talk ours. Well, so I think they're going like this, which is means obviously smoke or this or something. We'll see, we'll see. Should I give them? Uh, 
canned fish. <laughs> I don't know. What do you give them? It is flat calm out here. No one around. Absolutely no one around except an Indian fishing vessel. Maybe Sri Lanka. Get yourself decent. There's a bunch of uh, well, I did dudes. Not, I did not expect that. Do you want uh, mahi mahi? Yeah. Oh, what do you want to trade for it? Oh, what do they want? I don't know. Should I grab? Do you want to grab some apples? Cigarettes, actually. We don't have smoke. Don't have cigarettes. Never thought of doing that. Cookies? I've got cookies and yeah, that's like it. I don't even have good cookies. I don't have usually like I don't even have junk food really. Cookies. <laughs> cookies. Or, yeah. Wasabi peas? How, how many? Six. How many people? Six, six. One, two, three, four? Six. 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 Okay. Six beer. Oh, we don't need their fruit, those poor guys. They got good fruit, man. Should we give them Coke too? Coke? Beer? That's, that's a good trade. <laughs> They also have that big stick sticking off the side. Yeah. <laughs> the ramrod. <laughs> this is the one. Hello, baby. Hello, say hi, Willa. Hello, say hi, Willa. Okay, okay, watch out for the shrouds. Do you think you won't lose it, will you? There's no fish in there, it's pineapple and papaya. No fish? Yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So much harder with babies. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, nice. Oh, we're worried. We don't want you to lose the beer. Get <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Hope you didn't just cause Nuji by giving him eight beer. Hi, right, Captain gets three, <laughs> two. <laughs> Bye! Thank you! <laughs> It's okay? Thank you. Thank you. Beer, beer from Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
This is what we got, man. We got two mahi mahis. Uh, one right here. Another one right here. We're having fish for dinner. Uh, a couple. I don't know what these are. I think they're like they're not. They're not skipjack, but they're um, something like that. Uh, papaya and uh, pineapple. I think we scored pretty good. Willow hey. just fell in the pool. Bodie's crying. Willow woke up. Tip. I don't know. Bunny go away. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to do a trade at sea, Willa. Is it that hard? Bad timing, man. Bad timing. Those, those will be fillets. Um, and then these, I think I'll gut and um, we'll just cook them straight up and then eat it off the bone. Asian style. Not Asian style. Delicious style. <laughs> Delicious style. I think, I think they got a pretty good deal too. They got eight beer and six Cokes. There's six men aboard. We tried to offer them apples and like cookies and they're like, no, cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> no. Junk food, yes. Beer, yes. Pretty funny. I've said it so many times, the sea people are always happy and smiling and friendly. And all you get when we post some of the stuff is like, Pirates, you should carry a gun and be careful and all these things. And Absolutely true, but we had 100% of the time so far they've just been awesome. Yeah, yeah. That'll be a memory we won't forget for a long time. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, two screaming kids and a trade. Fantastic. Let's hope it goes better next time. <laughs> Here you go, kitchen staff. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, we're uh, kind of halfway between Thailand and Sri Lanka right now. We're heading to the Maldives. Uh, I think there'll be a lot more adventures like this going coming up, especially as we get closer to Africa. You guys should subscribe. Don't miss out on any videos. Am I gonna be able to hold that? Whoa! It's heavy. Jeez, this will feed us for the rest of the trip. <laughs> <laughs>